I hope you're feeling blessed and refreshed and back again with another one. And today I'm going to show you how to make another healthy meal that was very cheap to put together. Um, I'm using ground beef to make some hamburger patties. I'm going to make some mashed potatoes with some gravy. And then I'm going to make my own sauce on top with mushrooms and garlic. And I'm going to put some broccoli on the side. So if you weren't able to see the short the other day showing this finished product, I'll be sure to link it down below. So I'm just going to go in and only use half of my hamburger meat. The other half is going to be used for something else tomorrow. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pot and get it hot and ready. And I'm just going to take my patties and pat them out. I think we used about four patties today. Um, now my hamburger meat is still a little bit frozen, but that's okay because I just mushed it down as much as I could. And then as you can see here, I'm forming um, a hole in the middle of the patty with my finger. That just helps to keep the shape of the hamburger as it cooks. Because if you know, as you know, um, hamburger meat sh does shrink as it cooks. So that's just a little tip for y'all. Use your finger, put a hole in the middle of the meat, and it won't shrink. So like I said, I'm not really sure what to call this, but this is a healthy, cheap alternative to fast food, or even to some meals that we might make at home that aren't 100% um, healthy. I know myself, I'm working on not eating so much pork, but sometimes I just do. Um, but it's always best to use less salt when you're cooking and use like um, pepper or garlic powder or onion powder to bring out the other flavors um, in your meal. So as I'm patting out these patties, I'm just going to get into how much each thing that I'm using today cost me. Everything was purchased at Walmart. The whole roll of hamburger that meat that you saw there was about $11.52. And like I said, I'm only going to use half for this meal. The other half will probably be used for chili later in the week. And then the next item is a pre-packaged um, pack of mashed potatoes. And the mashed potatoes are only like $1.28 at Walmart. And my gravy mix only cost me $0.59 cents at Walmart. And um, the broccoli that I chose this time cost me about three dollars and some change I'm not sure how much but um, overall it was super cheap and then I used the mushrooms they were $1.98 I only used a half a pack of mushrooms and then my minced garlic for a small container only was about two dollars and sixty two cent and then if you add the oil in this case I'm using grapeseed oil to get my sauce started was about uh, two dollars and some cent as well so if you add everything up it should be about twenty dollars or a little bit less to make this entire meal so like i said this is the broccoli that i like to use this time it's a private selection but it's still the broccoli florets and with the broccoli florets um, they just come out better than the cuts the cuts is just mainly the stems and you're not really getting all the nutrients that's packed inside the florette part. So besides this meal being super cheap to make, it was also somewhat quick to make. The entire meal took me about 45 minutes and then I added it a few things and trimmed it up for you guys. I hope you are liking this video so far. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's a whole vibe. And if you're already subscribed, I really appreciate you for being here. You could be anywhere else, but you chose me, and I greatly appreciate you. As you guys can see, I used two teaspoons of garlic to make my sauce. I have to sneak garlic in wherever I can in my meals. It's just a super healthy. It's a fat burner as well as a great ingredient to use if you're trying to lower your blood pressure or your blood sugar. So now it is time for me to go ahead and put in my mushrooms. I only used about a half a container. I used the other half a container for something else at another point. 
and I turned the fire down low so that can simmer over there. Now I'm going to go ahead back over here and I'm going to make my brown gravy. As you guys can see, I like to multitask a lot. Um, I had to edit it down. It took me about 45 minutes because in the middle of cooking, I was going over to wash the dishes that I had just used. And I'm just trying to get into the habit of getting the dishes done right after dinner. It doesn't always happen. I'm not perfect, but it's one of my goals. Speaking of goals, I encourage you to make sure that you are accomplishing your goals. I encourage you to write them down in your blue book with your little blue pen and go back often and check them off. As you check them off, write down new ones. I find it really helpful for me as well as really important for me to stay on track with everything that I have to do in a day, every day. Um, but it's a joy and I feel like I am more organized and more calm throughout my day if I can set myself small goals and work myself up to the bigger goals one step at a time it's not a race right one foot in front of the other okay I'm sorry y'all I told you I was silly <laughs> all right back to the task at hand so I went ahead and pulled out my heavy whipping cream and I'm gonna use my brown gravy that I just mixed and I'm gonna get to making my sauce just a couple drops of heavy cream to help it get thick and again the fire is turned down low because I just want everything to simmer I don't want anything to burn now I made this meal similar before and a lot of you guys told me that you don't like mushrooms so you can use an alternative if you don't want mushrooms you can maybe use onion or green pepper or neither you can just make the sauce with all the seasoning and the garlic and um, it's just enjoyable to have a different flavor to pour on top of uh, the mashed potatoes personally I don't think you can taste mushrooms after they're in your food but everybody's different um, so if you don't like mushrooms or if you don't like any certain food I encourage you to maybe try it again because, uh, you know, just like when we were younger coming up or when we were raising our kids, they tell us to give our kids something. If they don't like it, try to give it to them again. They might like it the second time or even the third time. So as adults, I would just uh, like to cherish that and not lose that, me personally. All right, y'all, back to the task at hand. I hope you are enjoying this video. I really appreciate you for being here. And if you've been here the entire video, this is my second time saying that. <laughs> that just shows you I really appreciate you. All right, y'all. So here I'm again, multitasking back and forth. Now it's time to flip the burgers again. And uh, I personally like my hamburgers kind of gray in the middle. Um, not necessarily pink, even though a little bit of pink is not going to hurt anything. I just don't want them to be burnt, so I want them to remain juicy and not get too dry. So, my uh, brown gravy is done. I'm going to just go ahead and put that in a bowl, push it to the side, because I'm going to need that pot. I'm going to wash it out and use it for my mashed potatoes. But in the meantime, in between time, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my flour and put a couple teaspoons in my sauce. And I'm just going to, at this point, make it myself a roux. And remember, a roux is equal parts fat to equal parts flour. And then you just stir, 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 whisk, 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 make sure there's no lumps. Um, I would say take your time here. It's very easy to rush. But here, if you rush, it's going to get too thick. It's going to be lumpy and it's just going to taste dull because it's, it won't have any seasoning in it. So from here on out, you're going to see me whisking over and over just trying to make sure i get it to my liking and at the end of the day it's not going to be perfect but as long as it's flavorful and it's something you would eat then you know your kids will eat it and you will enjoy it no nothing go to waste over here so um, i take my time and i cook and Nini still likes to say that i put a lot of love in my food <laughs> and that's all the truth so at this point i'm gonna go ahead and season up my sauce and I 
thought about adding some more seasoning to it so i'm gonna mess around in the spice rack i'm not really crazy about spices but i do have uh, the basics and a few different other varieties but i don't have a particular cover for spices sometimes i think it's interesting when i see other people's um spice stock i think it's pretty cool all right y'all so now it's time to get the broccoli going multitasking keep on whisking keep on getting everything together the burgers are still back there making i just went ahead and put a little bit of butter in the skillet for the broccoli and what i like to do with my broccoli i'm gonna go ahead and take the burgers out by the way i'll show y'all how pretty they are but with my broccoli the bags that i buy are steamable so i like to take that bag and i like to throw it in the microwave for about four minutes maybe five minutes just to soften it up because i'll take it right out the freezer and once it's softened up then i'm ready to bring it over and um, put it in my melted butter give it a little seasoning and stuff and uh, cover it up and let it steam a little bit more it comes out super flavorful so that's just another tip for you if you don't already comment down below let me know how do you uh, make your broccoli do you ever put it in the microwave and then put it in the skillet or do you just put it in the microwave and put it in a bowl and it's done i've done it both ways and when i make my broccoli this way i like to call it steamed broccoli that's just because later on you're going to see me add a little bit oil to my broccoli that's just so that it um so that it fries up nicely and gives it a little bit of a crunch i think i just said steamed broccoli but i didn't mean to i meant to say fried broccoli <laughs> hey now hey look at you you're still there i see you i go on back out to the premiere hit the like button come on back in <laughs> yeah i've been looking at my accomplishments and i am so super excited to continue to make content for y'all i have so much in store and i can't wait okay that's enough talking let's hop back in this thing <laughs> so you see me with my um complete seasoning right i just wanted to add a little bit of that to my sauce now keep in mind that as you're cooking you might want to taste your food to make sure it's good to whoever you're serving it to as well <laughs> i wouldn't say use the serving spoons um i like to you'll probably see me stick my finger in my sauce or <laughs> use a spoon to taste it and make sure it's good and that's just because like i said i'm washing dishes in between i like a little bleach in my dish water so every so everything's good good over here all right y'all look at that broccoli don't it just look so delicious i love me some broccoli i'm gonna go ahead and season it up like i said a little salt a little pepper i barely use salt a little garlic powder simple as that this is what you call fried broccoli this is what i call fried broccoli and then add a little bit more butter I'm steady saying butter in this case I'm cooking with margarine I just think that butter is more expensive I do use butter when I make cakes but I use margarine for everyday cooking I think really your seasoning is what really um, brings out the flavor not necessarily butter versus margarine comment down below let me know what y'all think and as always don't forget to comment down below and let me know that you were here after the premiere the live chat doesn't always save and i just greatly appreciate the comments and i really enjoy engaging with y'all so please 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 leave me a comment after the premiere is over all right so we got the top on that thing we turn it down a little bit so it can simmer and not burn there i go again messing with the dishes i feel another edit coming up it's worth it y'all believe me when i get going it ain't no stopping for me i like to get it done get it out the way because when i sit down it's over so i encourage you to do the same don't put it off to the till later you know you could do it now especially if you are a mom stay-at-home mom like me you don't want to go and sit down after dinner and then maybe fall asleep because you've been so full like me <laughs> and then wake up and come and see a whole uh you know sink full of dishes and you know it's really frustrating 
I know from experience. I'm working on me and I'm trying to encourage you to work on you too. In the meantime, in between time, look at that sauce, y'all. Did y'all see that? It came out all right. It was all right. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little switcheroo with the pots and get them mashed potatoes going. Now, I do like to make fresh homemade mashed potatoes as well with a bag of potatoes and the butter. Does anybody else remember being in the kitchen with grandma or mom peeling potatoes and cutting them up and putting them on the boil? And once they get done boiling, you got to pour that water off, put some butter in that pot or in that bowl, and then uh, mash up them potatoes. And then come in with your salt and your pepper and your a little bit more butter and whatever else you might need for your mashed potatoes. Well, this is exactly that, but it's less work. This is a quick mom version, <laughs> this cheap version. So yeah, I love these. Even the box of instant potatoes taste weird to me. They kind of taste like cardboard. It just depends on the brand, I think. So anywho, back to the task at hand. I got a little bit more butter in there. I'm gonna go in with my salt and my pepper. Just a little bit. I don't even know if I use salt in these mashed potatoes because most of the time I use so much butter or margarine, whatever you wanna call it, that I don't need salt. Oh, I remember this time I do. So here come a little bit. See how much I use? Just a dash, just a pinch. So there is one more ingredient that I forgot. Can anybody guess? Can anybody guess? Leave a comment down below. One more thing. What is it, y'all? Come on, come on. Five, four, three, two, one, and boom. Milk. It's milk, y'all. It's the milk for me. It tastes different. I don't know. For the instant potatoes, it's already made with water. Just the milk kind of gives it that that creamy taste, that home taste. I don't know what you want to call it. What y'all think? Let me know. All right, y'all. So while I got the milk out, I might as well fill up my little container. We got them from Amazon. I'll go ahead and link them down below as well if you're interested. Let me know. But anywho, y'all, we got just a couple more minutes here. Um, we winding on down. So, like I said, there is a short, and the short shows the finished picture with the food on the plate. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it already. There I go. Tasting my mashed potatoes, see what I mean? You got to. You got to. All right, y'all, so I'm going back over to that broccoli. It is just about done. Y'all been rocking this long. I don't think I've had a video this long in a minute. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know in the comments or let me know down below. Would you prefer longer videos like this? Do you like to see my step-by-step -step cooking? Or would you prefer shorter videos? Lex explanation. Also, I'm always interested in new recipes. So if you got anything for me, comment down below. Let me know. I have a couple of recipes coming. I got a couple ideas coming up for you guys. So, yeah, back to the cooking video, y'all. <laughs> Here I go. There's the oil. I'm using grapeseed oil this time so that it can fry up fried broccoli. All right, y'all. That's it. There it is. Time to plate it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make Hubby's first. He likes his in a bowl. I remember um, when I first met my sister-in-law, she told me a grown man eats on a plate. Not a paper plate, but a plate. <laughs> a grown man eats with a fork. Not no spoon, not no plastic spoon, not no plastic fork, but a fork. <laughs> 
So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That stuck with me. So um, at this point, I'm just finishing up. I'm adding a little bit more broccoli to Hubby's bowl. And I am putting the sauce on top. And here is what it looks like. I just put his broccoli on the side. And a lot of people ask me, what do I do about my picky eaters? We just keep everything separate so that we can plate it the way we like. This time I'm making Nini's plate. And she wanted the mashed potatoes and the broccoli on the side with just a hamburger patty with a little barbecue sauce on top with no bread. So it's still super healthy and um, everybody's happy. So we are wrapping it up here, y'all, at the end of the day. Thank you so much again for rocking with us. Um, this is how we make it work for everybody. Some days I have to make more than one thing, but most days I just um, keep everything separate so that we can eat it the way we like. I made it to the end of my first full cooking video at a pretty good angle. There's Nini's plate. Doesn't that look tasty? Um, so yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this voiceover. If you have any suggestions, anything you want to see more of, please comment down below. And y'all, this meal was so good. It was fire. Just let me be the one to tell you. You could do it. I see I went back with a little brown gravy and put it on top too. But you can do it, you guys. I really appreciate you. You have a great day. And remember, be true to yourself. Because if you can't be true to yourself, you can't be true to nobody else. Bye-bye.